Hey guys, we Ronald Chris Tomer here with this morning mountain weather update. All right, here's what I'm seeing this morning. I have seen a couple of different uh, shifts and trends here, but two storm systems, 2-1 through 2-9. One of the things, it may last into 2-10. Um, that second storm appears to really dig a little further to the south and move a little bit slower. The initial freezing levels when storm number one comes in, uh, late 31 into 2-1, are very high. Um, in many places across the West, I mean, it has been exceptionally warm. But each day the snow levels should fall as colder air progressively moves in across the West. Storm number one and storm number two now look like they're both going to bring a moderate intensity surge of atmospheric river moisture to California. And then, of course, some of that will get carried into the interior state. Storm number one, roughly 2-1 through 2-4. Storm number two, 2-5 two through 2-10. Now, the Panhale Hooker Storm System for Colorado is tracking further south and a little bit weaker. Still going to see some snow in the Denver area, the foothills, and the Continental Divide, but less than what I uh, was thinking yesterday. So all of those things we will cover in this update. To radar, already seeing storm number one move in to the west coast. Heavy precip with snow only at the highest of elevations up in the Pacific Northwest. I mean, you got to go above seven or 8,000 feet. That precludes a lot of places from seeing good snow. In California, 7 to 7,500, maybe 8,000 feet uh, with this initial surge of moisture moving into the Sierra. You can see it's just a matter of time before it hits Tahoe tonight and Mammoth tonight into tomorrow. Let me give you the lay of the land here with the, uh, the water vapor. So there's storm number one. It's a strong one. Storm number two is sitting right behind it. So there's one and there's two. Both of them being carried by this strong subtropical jet and plowing into the west coast. So storm number one will come in, move into the interior over the next few days. Storm number two digs a little further to the south, takes its time, and then moves into the interior. It's a little more ragged, but it will have, it'll definitely have some moisture with it. It's just going to take a little bit longer for it to move. Here's that forecast uh, for the atmospheric river. So we look at what's called integrated vapor transport. You can see two surges, with one with the first storm and one with the second storm in time. And this is, rel this is accurate and relative for um, that central and northern um, uh, California coast around San Francisco. So it's valid for that area, but then this moisture, some of it will get carried into the interior. Let me show you what the forecast radar and satellite look like. So watch it. It hits Tahoe and Mammoth overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. All right, here's 2-2 two, two in the morning. It begins to make its move. Snow for the Wasatch, Idaho, Nevada, moving into Colorado. Now, in general, the heaviest accumulation in Colorado will be western and southwest Colorado with significantly less accumulation east of Vail, less in Summit County, less on the Continental Divide. Here we go, 2-2 two, two in the afternoon. Now here's the key time period. This is 2-3 in the morning. This is when we see that area of low pressure spin up. Now it looks like it's going to be a little further to the south, a little bit weaker. Um, so that pulls a little bit of that intensity, a little bit of that upslope out of the equation for Denver, the foothills, and the continental divide. But we're still going to see snow for those areas, just not as much. I've been to probably three to six inches for Loveland, A Basin, Eldora, Keystone, and Winter Park. All right, let's move into the afternoon hours. Still spinning, but then by the time we get into 2-4, that storm is gone. It's faded. Here comes storm number two, and it takes its time. It's a little bit more ragged. Notice it's spinning. It's still spinning off California, but it's throwing moisture into the interior. So we're lacking a circulation in the interior. Here we are on 2-7 in the afternoon. Snow for the Tetons, the Wasatch, Colorado, but in particular, western and southwest Colorado again. You see that a lot with these, these, uh, these closed lows. Here's 2-9. 2-9 late in the day, and it's still snowing across the interior. So that's why I think it could last into 210. I mean, the low still has to move through. Wait till I show you the jet stream. So this is the jet on 2-1. Not much has changed. Main storm system comes in on the nose of the jet there in California on 2-1. 2-9, big broad trough. Even on 2-9, it has yet to translate through, so that's why it may last into 210. But that storm's a much slower mover. All right, grand total accumulation here. 2-1 through 2-9, uh, 2 to 5 feet in the Sierra. This is storm number 1 plus storm number 2. A couple of feet or more in the, uh, the Wasatch, about a, about a two-footer there up for the, uh, the Tetons. Anywhere you see purple is a foot or more. In Colorado, you can really see the dividing line. Western and southwest Colorado, 1 to 3 feet, but significantly less east of Vail. And we'll zoom in on these numbers. Um, here is the I-70 corridor in north in Colorado. Grand totals, 2-1 through 2-9. Again, the cutoff there. Vail West, one to two feet with potentially three feet in the San Juans. 
Breckenridge might be the exception there. You, you know, Copper to Breck, you might have just enough overrun to get some snow over the 10 mile. But then in Summit County, in the heart of it, up to the Continental Divide, three to six inches. Let's go further west. Here are the West Elks, Aspen Snowmass, Buttermilk, Aspen Highlands, anywhere from one to two feet. Crested Butte, Capitol Peak, down the Collegiate's about a foot. So this area definitely benefits more from this type of closed low that comes through. Let's do it by time period. So 2-1 through 2-4, storm number one, you can see the accumulation. 1 to 2 feet Sierra, about a foot for the, uh, the Wasatch, 7 to 12 for the Tetons, and in Colorado, that big dividing line, western and southwest Colorado get, get a foot, if not more. Here's time period two, 2-5 two through 2-9, and keep in mind some of this accumulation may last into 2-10. Uh, about a foot there for the Tetons, about a foot for the Wasatch, and western and southwest Colorado do well again, and roughly 2 to 3 feet for the Sierra. One last stop in the northeast, barely anything, one to two inches of accumulation, and this happens mainly 2-1 and 2-2. Let me take you back. We'll end on the grand total map. 2-1 uh, through 2-9 still looks exciting. I like what I'm seeing here. This is exactly what we need. Uh, two different storm systems, and the only issue is it's going to be a little bit warm. You know, we don't have that Arctic outbreak to really pump up the, uh, the ratios like we did a few weeks ago, uh, but just cold enough. For a lot of places. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here. I always appreciate it. Take care.